Hello. The wine we're going to make today has been likened to a Hungarian toque. Our recipe may be alcoholically stronger than our normal wine strengths here and not as dry to the taste. We're going to make this from roasted shells and figs. We will start by looking at what equipment we need. For the first stage we're going to use a two gallon bin with a sealable lid, a set of scales, measuring spoons, coarse and fine straining bags, a funnel and a two pint jug. All the equipment needs to be sterilised and to achieve this we've used a Camden tablet solution. To make a gallon of this wine the ingredients you will need are 8 ounces of rosehip shells, 4 ounces of chopped figs, 3.5 pounds of sugar and toke wine yeast. The additives are one vitamin B1 tablet of three and a half milligram strength, one teaspoon of pectolase, one teaspoon of yeast nutrient and one teaspoon of citric acid. Do not worry about making notes just now as these ingredients will be listed at the end of this video. We always like to use a yeast starter and this is made from a tablespoon of orange juice, a teaspoon of sugar, a cup of water and the yeast. Place these in a clean wine bottle, plug the neck of the bottle with cotton wool and leave for 24 hours. Meanwhile, chop the figs well and place in a plastic bin with the rosehip shells and the sugar. Pour in six pints of boiling water and this is the first three pints and then stir to dissolve the sugar and leave for the same 24 hours as the starter. Here we are with the second three pints of boiling water and once that is in I shall stir to dissolve the sugar which is nearly all gone anyway. Put the lid on the bin and leave for the same 24 hours that we lift the starter. And that's it until tomorrow. Here we are 24 hours later. Now with the yeast starter active we measure each of the additives and place them in the bin. Firstly one 3 milligram vitamin B1 tablet crushed between two spoons. Secondly, one teaspoon of pectolase.
one teaspoon of yeast nutrient. And lastly, one teaspoon of citric acid. Now the yeast starter. And to stir in. The bin should now be left covered in a warm place to ferment for five days, stirring twice daily. Here we are five days later. To continue, we strain the liquid from the figs and rosehip shells which are in the bin we have a clean gallon jar, a funnel, coarse and fine straining bags, two pint jug and an airlock with a rubber bung. We place the coarse mesh bag inside the fine mesh bag. start to pour the contents of the bin slowly through them into the gallon jar.
When all of the liquid has been transferred to the jar, top up with cold water to the neck if necessary. It wasn't in this case necessary as we had just the right amount of liquid from the fruit. Then an airlock should be fitted, which is that. This jar should now then be placed into a warm area and left to ferment to dryness or a specific gravity of a thousand or less. The length of time that the wine will continue to ferment is difficult to say because it depends on a number of different factors. Here we are five weeks later, a lot longer than we'd anticipated it would be, and fermentation seems to have stopped at last. So if you think that the wine has finished, it should be checked before the next step. To check the wine, you will need a hydrometer and a trial jar. Siphon wine from the gallon jar into the trial jar and make a re take a reading with the hydrometer. I shall do that right now. Now, to take a reading, lower the hydrometer into the trial jar and spin gently. Reading is a thousand and three. Now I've got to return the wine from this trial jar back into the gallon jar and add a crushed Camden tablet and leave for 24 hours. As I said earlier, to return the wine from the trial jar into the gallon jar is happening right to this minute. I'm not pouring it with any great gusto, for want of a better word, because it is very easy to disturb the sediment in the bottom of the jar unnecessarily. That is now complete. Now I'm going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of Camden powder, which is the equivalent of a tablet. Place the airlock. We now leave that 
for 24 hours and come back and siphon the contents into a clean jar. Here we are 24 hours later to rack the wine into another clean gallon jar. We use the siphon tube attached to the end of the plastic tubing. Siphon the wine into the new jar taking care not to transfer any of the sediment from the bottom of the donor jar. Now we have to top up the jar with cold water and fit a board cork plugged with cotton wool. Come, sir. The wine <coughs> will now, when I fill this up, The wine will now start to settle and clear even further when placed into a cooler environment. This wine will normally clear by itself and does not need anything to be added. Once absolutely clear, the wine can be bottled and left to mature for a minimum of six months before tasting. The transfer is done using the same siphoning process as before, being careful to leave at least half an inch between the bottom of the cork and the top of the wine. We wish you all the best with your wine making and hope that this process that you've watched today will help you. Our online wine making help site is available to answer any questions that you may have and is a free service that we offer. Bye bye.